Spawning the top left hand corner. Representing that Platinum Heroes clan tag. It's the Protoss player. It's Perfections. And in the bottom right hand corner. We've watched one of his games already today. We've got another Protoss player. It's Niven. So please. Uh, anyone can correct me if I am wrong. But I believe that uh, we have. If we get a TV. TVT is the only matchup that didn't get cast today. No TVT. This will be the first PvP of the day, and it means that TVT is the only matchup. It is actually impossible for us to have a TVT at this point in the Platinum Heroes on this cast. There may have been a TVT that was played, but it did not get cast. So, Hooray for all of us on that front. No TVT. Kappa. what is so pvp let's talk about pvp while these players get ready to go instead of me over analyzing every little detail of what they are doing let's talk about pvp well first of all you will notice in pvp that a protoss player will typically start up a second gateway before they start up their cyber core much like niven is doing right here uh pvp is more aggressive opener than most i think this goes for most mirror matchups you typically have to change your opener to be a bit more aggressive and uh the second gateway is going to come up a bit late for perfections but it's mostly just important that it comes up if you don't get that second gateway and your opponent recognizes that you don't get that second gateway it is an auto lose they will move across the map they will have more than you they'll have more stalkers they'll have adepts whatever they have they're going to have more it is an auto lose so PvP and PvP, typically we've been seeing a lot of Protosses today go for a quick expansion, right? They want to quickly expand, swell up that economy, get into the real the real meat and potatoes of the mid and late game. And that's not going to be the case in PvP. In PvP, uh, you always have to be ready for early pushes to come. We look right now, no proxies. No proxies or anything like that right now, but proxies become a big factor in PvP. All kinds of cheesy shenanigans like that to look out for couple of depths are going to pop out here for Niven. Moving out onto the map. Looking to do that thing that two adepts can do. And win the game on their own. Interesting looking wall here from Perfections. Very interesting. Two adepts. If you look at that mini map, they are about halfway across. Expansions have been started for both players. A tiny bit ahead for Perfections. But let's see how Perfections deals with these Adepts. That's going to be the first major test of the game. Adepts are going to tickle. They're going to tickle the Sentry. They're going to get through. And they are going to start going to work on this Mineral Line. As he shift queued up, he did not. So one thing he didn't do here, he didn't shift queue up. This could have done a bit more damage. It could have killed five or six probes. If properly shift queued. But two probes for two Adepts is going to be a good trade for Perfections. So, well handled so far. Was unable to stop them at the wall. That's the whole point of walling, by the way. The whole point of walling in PvP is to prevent that, but still didn't take too much damage. Robo facility on the way per, for Perfections. Robo just now starting up at home for Niven. Expanding that gateway count, looking to get aggressive, warping in a couple more stalkers. Neither player investing in any static defense so far. No shield batteries, no cannons. I don't even think we have a forge yet. Observer and Twilight Council on the way for perfections. Let's see what Niven has. Just lots of stalkers. As the Robo finishes up, he'll squeeze out an Observer of his own. Swelling that Stalker count, but not adding on a Twilight. There's not going to be any Blink. There's not going to be any Charge moving forward. The Twilight is a very, very key building. Perfections has a Twilight, but he hasn't started these upgrades just yet. He is going to be going into Charge. So rather than be troubled with Blink, there's a cool thing you can do. You Blink back each individual Stalker before it dies, and it's very, very powerful. But it's very, very difficult to pull off. So I like Charge. I like that choice. Easier to execute. Uh, pretty much guaranteed damage. They charge forward. 
and uh, char charge bots can get on top of uh, on top of stalkers and really do a lot of damage. Still, no more tech coming out from Niven. For everything I talked up about PvP, PvP, both of these players are playing very defensively. It's uh. People getting timed out and banned in chat and stuff. Sorry, I got distracted for a second. Welcome to Twitch. Well, anyways, so Stalker Immortal is going to be the choice of Niven. Still not adding on at Twilight. Finally going to add a Forge on so he can get some sort of upgrades going. Third base has been started for Perfections. I like the macro that I'm seeing on this side of the map a lot. He is behind on Army in a fairly scary way. Uh, but a, a warp in or two will correct that. One immortal is going to finish. Another immortal will start up as soon as the supply block is cleared up. Charge is finishing soon. Even adding on a robo bay. Maybe getting into some disruptors. I like what I'm seeing here out of Perfections. If he holds this in a decisive way, I think Perfections will be putting himself in a position to win game one. I, I don't see any reason why this shouldn't be a decisive hold. But I've been wrong many times. Let's see what happens. All right, here comes the fight. Now, the stalker count is heavily in favor of Niven. Will he be able to get on top of these immortals, one-shot them, and turn everything in his favor? Moving over here towards the third base, looking to get some infrastructure damage that'll last. Possibly not recognizing that he had a window there to really get on top of the army of his opponent and possibly win the game. Going to settle, though. He's going to go ahead and settle, take the third base down. Let's see what kind of reinforcements have been prepared. Throw it down to shield battery, but that's, yeah, thinking twice about the shield battery. That shield battery is not going to be up nearly in time. A few adepts are shading in towards the main, and we've got an Archon body blocking. A bit of F2ing on both sides there. F2 for F2s are going to cancel each other out. One Disruptor is joining the fray. One Disruptor shot could win this game. But will he have the army control necessary to secure that one Disruptor shot? Charge Lots getting on top of the army are a good start. The Disruptor shot's going to take out one Stalker, but it's going to take out one Charge Bot as well. Backing up, going to get a charge, charge cooldown. Backing up, using the shield battery to try and get the better of this fight. Buying time for another Disruptor shot. He is going to hold for the time being. Worker count heavily in favor of Perfections with the 12-worker lead, but he lost his third base. Income's not going to be in his favor for long. Niven will bring the army home. Not feeling good. Decides he's going to be content with sniping the third. Extended Thermal Lance is on the way for Perfections. I love the way he is getting into his tech options. Let's see if he's able to convert that into a win. Because last time he got into a little tussle, he just got sh out Stalker. It was just too many Stalkers. They muscled their way through him. Neither player floating too much money. A lot of gas floating on the side of Perfections. He's got that Templar Archives. And there we go. He spent 600 gas right as I said it. And he spent it on Archons. Yeah. He spent it warping in. That's what I was going to say. The Dark Templar for Archons are a great way for him to dump some of that gas. That's exactly what he's going to do. We've got one Disco Ball, we've got one Colossus, and this is kind of a ragtag army, like a grab bag of Protoss units, while on the other side, we have a fairly homogenous Stalker mass here. Now, Stalkers, and stalkers, there's always the joke, Stalkers are not good, and I agree, Stalkers are not good, they don't do good damage, they will get absolutely destroyed by some of the tech that's on the other side, but in high enough number, the one-shot potential, if they can be properly microed and skip out on... They, if it can be properly microed and focus down a few of the high priority targets of their opponent and then get maybe blink away. I don't think we have blink, but yeah, no blink, but that would be the ideal way to go about it. Let's see what kind of buildings. Still no Twilight Council. 
So uh, Niven has just completely neglected building a Twilight Council in this game. He's not going to be able to get into any Archons. He is extending his own Thermal Lance, so he will be able to add Colossus. And he's he's out macroed in the sense where he's been able to produce more than his opponent. He's got a bigger army supply count, and he's got a worker lead. So he has outproduced his opponent, but he's not going up the tech tree. And I think the high-tech army... Um, Micro to burn him. He did go through with a little bit of harassment up here. 19 probes fall, so I missed something fairly significant. 19 probes fell, so that's big. So yeah, uh, that's probably the biggest thing I missed so far today. Go me, but... Moving his army, maybe expecting... Oh, he found a warp prism. The warp prism is what did the damage. It warped some stuff in. So cool. Now I know what I missed while I was distracted with... Rambling about non-important things. A large stalker force is moving in towards the third of perfections. Now, this if this is the, the kind of map movement with the mobile stalkers, being able to get his opponent out of position and move in, get some damage, get out without throwing the army away, could be a way that Niven wins with this lower tech army. Here we go. He is going to move forward. Going to jump, get a couple probes for his trouble. Maybe target fire down the nexus. He does look like a little indecisive with what he wants to do here, and he does have that choke point he has to evacuate through. Colossus beginning to do a lot of work with the splash damage as well as the Archons. Stalker count thinning out so quickly. Look at these Archons and Colossus go. The entire army is thrown away. A large army for Perfections remains. The lower tech army of Niven gets swallowed whole by the splash damage of Perfections. Now Perfections is moving out onto the map, looking to close out this game. 77 army supply to 34 of his opponent. So much high tech army, so much splash damage coming across. I don't know how you hold this if you're Niven, and I think Niven is thinking the same thing right about now. A few charge lots in a Colossus are going to be able to... No, they're not even charge lots. They're slow zealots. Slow zealots. There is no Twilight Council. There is no charge. And the fat ladies are singing here, Niven. Gathering the forces for one final stand with upgrades even with army supply favoring perfections and army tech quality favoring perfections. There is just absolutely no way. Lasers begin to fall down. All of the charge bots will be absolutely evaporated. The rest of the Protoss army will move on top of the Colossus. One Colossus falls. The other two Colossus will retreat to the high ground, but the ranged units of his opponent will be able to pick him off. Downfall the remaining Colossus. A few charge lots are warped in on the backside. Attempt to jump in on the four Colossi of his opponent. GG's call. Perfections will take map one. Spawning in the bottom left hand corner, representing that Platinum Heroes tag. Looking to close out this semifinal 2 0. It's Perfections. In the top right hand corner, will he build the Twilight Council this time? Time will tell. It's Niven. So, game one, I went into a fairly. <laughs> fairly lengthy description about the defining characteristics of PvP. About why many... It was a, a description about why many people hate the matchup. It was also a description about some of the wonderful things about the matchup. Some of the fun that we can see. And I am disappointed to report that we did not see any of that fun last time. There was no proxy tech. There was no cheeky early aggression all we got were a couple opening adepts which is the most standard thing in the world and perfections he's okay with how it went and this time around he is scouting very thoroughly to make sure that the no proxy tech trend is one that is going to continue throughout the duration of this pvp Scouting away with this probe. Probe's not going to see any proxy tech. Very pleased with that so far. Second gateway is on the way from Niven. Cyber core is a little delayed. There's the cyber core. 
everything in order over here for perfection. He started his cyber on time. Second gateway is also on the way. Second pylon finishing up in a place where you can stash some tech. Third gateway being added on for Niven. Last game, Niven went with a very heavy gateway style, a very heavy stalker style that did not pay off for him in the end. Starting on the low ground here for Perfections. He was able to get that natural nexus started up sooner than his opponent, which will allow his economy to scale up quicker if he's able to stay on top of that pro production. Probes are looking pretty even right now. A, a slight nudge in favor of Niven, but that nudge will be quickly corrected if Niven does not get off his butt here and start his expansion. I think he will be starting it soon. Robo's been started up for Niven, but still no Twilight. Let's see if a Twilight is in the cards this time around. Back on the other side of the map, Perfection's tech has been delayed by his decision to expand. Now, I think this expansion was a punishable expansion. I think you get four or five Stalkers across the map super quickly. Uh, your opponent's not able to produce as many Stalkers. I think... I think this is punishable, but the window to punish it is closing. It may have already closed. Perfections may want to consider a battery on the low ground, but he's feeling very comfortable with the expansion that he has up and running. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, Niven's expansion is coming, but it's behind. It's delayed. Triple Warp Gate production with Immortals coming out of the Robo is going to be the look of Niven. Very similar to last game. A Twilight Council has been started up Perfections. That Twilight Council was one of the deciding factors that allowed him to secure this 1-0 lead in the series. Stalkers are going to be the choice once more. A Forge being added on here for Niven. Second base will be up and running soon. He's looking to get out on the map with these units that he's made. And I will say that right now, these two units meet in a fight. Niven's units are absolutely going to steamroll perfections. That one immortal is such a big deal. Uh, not starting up an immortal right here for perfections. He probably needs to be chronoing that immortal with the forces moving across the map. I don't think he is quite aware of what's coming. Niven's strategy this time is going to be to get his damage done before charge, before Archons, before all of these wonderful things that come with the Twilight Council become a factor in the game. Immortal going to lead the charge here as Niven's army moves in towards the natural of his opponent. A few slow zealots getting out ahead of the pack. They will pick off a stalker. They'll pick off another stalker. Three stalkers will fall before the zealots are finished off. And it is now stalker v stalker with the support of one immortal and what... Wow, what support that one immortal can be. The stalker count has thinned out completely for Niven, but this fight is going to be borderline, very close to being a draw. That one immortal did so much work, but that's that. The attack has fizzled out. It has been defended. He did not even need a battery to defend. Defender's advantage and some meat shield slow zealots were all that he needed. A Robo Bay is up and running now. Pearl Perfection's back at home. Niven has not gone into any such tech. No Robo Bay. No Twilight Council. All of the tech is once again in favor of our Red Protoss. Our Red Protoss is starting to look a bit oversaturated here on his natural. Probably start time to think about taking out a third. Here we go. Morphing in some Blink Stalkers in the main. This Warp Prism looking to get some damage done. Army has been F2'd back to deal with this. And now we are seeing the other side of what Immortals can do when they are on the right side. Immortals coupled with these charge lots coupled with some additional dps from some stalkers proving to be one formidable force four workers have fallen and four workers is not going to be enough for the commitment that niven has showed in this fight down falls the last remaining forces here the warp prism has escaped out towards the location of the third base it is being trailed here by an observer the third base is cute to start up 
Worker count 52 to 39 in favor of Perfections. Army is in his favor as well. Niven, knowing that he needs to start up a third to not fall further behind his opponent, rushing out towards his third base location to try and get that up and running. Niven still not investing in a Twilight Council. So no, no Twilight really hamstringing his tech options. Niven is going to send that War Prism back out towards his opponent's base, bringing it in towards the natural this time instead of through the main. Going to once again try and buy some time, warp in some units, maybe get some worker damage and force his opponent to hopefully F2 his army back to deal with these forces. Maybe that's not the case. War Prism seems a little indecisive on the map where it wants to be. I think he got F2 back home. Worker lead, ha the gap has been closed worker-wise. Niven, either through Chrono or through a better focus on continuing to produce workers, has closed that gap. And as time passes, if he is staying on top of that, that is something that will yield positive results over time. One Colossus is here for perfection but the, the lack of tech the lack of tech is just killer the thermal lance is expanding is extending here for perfection and will make those colossus much better units templar archive has been thrown down archons are going to be a thing very soon I'm going to go ahead and drop three adepts but three adepts not going to be worth their weight right now even if they get a couple workers the worker lead is not as significant as the tech lead right now A Robo Bay and a second Robo Facility have been thrown up and running, which is not a bad idea tech-wise, expanding the gate count as well, but uh, we're going to keep harping on it. Still no Twilight Council. Third base starting to look respectable here for Niven. He is expanding his economy. He's not going down quietly. He's not going to make this easy. Oh, he did get a Twilight. Okay, I missed it. Twilight is not only got, but charge is almost done. I've just been assuming he's not getting a Twilight. Panning over it, missing it. But yeah, he's also going to be going into a Templar Archive as well. So Niven has filled those gaps on his tech tree. Uh, so yeah, down eight workers on the same count of bases. He's down a bit on supply, down 30 army supply, but Perfection is not seem keen to really do anything with the supply lead that he's gotten for himself. He's also down on upgrades. That extended Thermal Lance is significant. We're, I'm, I'm curious to see what, what happens here. Fourth base being thrown down for perfections now as I uh, as I speak out in defense of Niven and his chances in this game, I can't help but be taken back by the supply. 162 to 108 in favor of perfections. That is a pretty overwhelming lead. Not saying that that can't be thrown. But as I look at this death ball of Protoss that is getting ready to come across the map, it is hard to imagine a reality where the pitiful defenses of Niven are able to stand up to this chat army. War Prison coming back in towards the Nat. Gonna hopefully get that army up to buy a bit more time because uh, he needs to buy time more than he realizes. Five probes, six probes fall, seven probes. This is the kind of adept pressure he's been hoping to get with this War Prism and these adepts. The entire army is F2 would out of position to clean it up, and they will get cleaned up, but the worker count is now in favor of Niven. Niven up two workers, so he's gone from down 12 workers to up two workers. He's down a base down a base up on upgrades did he extend the thermal lance he did extend the thermal lance both players have the most extended of lances hit squad of zealots being sent out towards the south the southeastern quadrant and they will they're gonna get lucky here and bump into some some probes but that's pretty lucky so uh, as the probes get cleaned up on their way to start a remote colony this will be a distraction for Niven. Niven knows that this is coming. He's got his army in position to deal with it, but does he know about the army to the northwest? The army on the northwest is moving towards his third base location right now while he is cleaning this up. What is here to deal with this? Absolutely nothing. Charge lots are going to get on top of this base without anything here to defend it. They're going to go ahead and right click on the nexus. They really want to get this nexus down, recognizing they're in a, a bit of a situation here. They're going to go ahead and pull back. Still outnumbering his opponent by a fairly good, fairly good margin here. Up on a Colossus, Archon counts looking similar. 
We're at a pretty interesting point in this game. Army supply 119 to 86 in favor of Niven. Niven has managed to get this fourth base up and running and mining. With the bank that both players have, I wouldn't mind seeing some aggressive attempts at expanding. You know one of the expansions are going to get taken off, but you, you, you try anyways. Jumping out here, Perfections is going to find a nice little gaggle of workers once again attempting the long distance mine. Probably getting a little too greedy here, throwing away a bit too much for these workers. Moving in towards the north side as well though, and he will take that third base location down. Did he hemorrhage too many units? Eh, he's not even going to take the chance. He's going to pull back. He says, I picked the base off. Let me rebuild. I know I've been killing lots of workers. I'm fairly confident I have the lead, and he would be correct. All right, you got to deal with these charge lots, though. All right, charge lots finally get dealt with. Pull him back to regroup his army and rebuild. Third base location has been decimated here for Niven. He's managed to sneak out this base. And while it is up and running, as you can see by a glance, there's nobody here working on it. Re-establishing his turf here towards his third base location. Upgrades are finishing up. That is a nice upgrade lead that he has carved out for himself. 2-2 two, two to the plus one of his opponent. 2-2 two, two, not even started for perfection. So that upgrade disadvantage could become a problem if things get to a more even point. Army supplies are even. Upgrades are in favor of Niven. Niven might be at a point here. He's way down in supply, but most of that's worker. Several Archons morphing in an exposed location. They will get jumped on. I'm not sure who's winning this fight, but here we go. Extended Thermal Lance doing fantastic work here from Perfections. Archons lasering away at each other. Both armies at a mere stand. Both armies would be at a standstill. They would be canceling each other out. But 2-2 two, two, so much more effective than plus one. Niven going to win this fight, and he's going to win it decisively. Falling backward, trying to regroup his perfections. He says, I was so far ahead. How did this happen? More Archons morphing where they are not safe. This un army looking nay unkillable here on the front door of perfections. Inching forward, 71 army supply, 38. The 2-2 two -two upgrade proving to be too much to deal with. What a fantastic 2-2 two -two timing here. Still has not been started. 3-3 three -three on the way for Niven. If this doesn't work, he says, I'll do it again with 3-3. Three -three. Colossus count looking pretty intimidating there for Perfections. Will it be enough to clean up this push, though? It will not. Niven moving toward, towards the natural of his opponent, continuing to saw through the army. Supply is now in his favor. He was so, so far down in supply. But an advantageous fight with a 2-2 two -two to 1-1 one -one work or upgrade lead. One in such a decisive manner that it is now snowballed to a point where I think we are looking at a map three. A Colossus will pop out for perfections just to get lasered down by three Colossus from his opponent. Down falls the natural base of perfections. Workers headed to the nearest base are not headed in a safe path. Worker count is down to 33 for Perfections. He's taken a couple of bases out on the map, which I think is his motivation to stay in this game. But there is just no world where he kills this army. GG is called. We're headed to map three. Saving my voice here as we get ready. I have this map. I have one more best of three, and then I have a best of five. And then I get to do it all again tomorrow. So, sorry, I cannot continue to talk, 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 talk in the break. But here we go. Now is the time to be excited. Winner of this match is headed to the finals. The loser will be exiting the tournament early. Spawning in the top right-hand corner of Zen. It's the red Protoss from Platinum Heroes. Perfections. In the bottom left-hand corner... We've got the blue Protoss, it's Niven. So 
So yeah, uh, neither of these players are uh, too cheeky with their PvP strategies. Give it a few months, one of these players is going to be proxy double roboing or something ridiculous. But for right now, both players seem to enjoy a more straightforward approach to the matchup. They want to build a death ball army. They want to do the old school Protoss of just having better units than their opponent. Second gas, quicker for perfections. Second gate is a little late for perfections. You see, I don't think it's going to matter with the way that both of these players approach the matchup. Probably time to add on a second gas here if you're Niven, and there it is. Niven's probe is scouting, confirming that no cheeky early expansions have been taken, anything like that. These probes I'm gonna kiss. Probe fight, probe fight, no, let him fight to the death. What's the point of a probe fight if you're not gonna let him finish? Supply is dead even on both sides of the map. There is one extra worker on the side of Haven, but both it, it, it's it's a uh, part of the reason I'm not talking is because I'm out of things to say. I've been talking for over four hours now, four and a half hours. The other reason I'm not talking is because there's there's tension. There's tension. You can feel it right now. These players have been playing for as long as I've been casting, and I've been casting a while, and they've been fighting through series after series. Different players, different play styles, and now both players are one map away from a spot in the finals. I have been here one map away from the spot in the finals of a Heroes tournament. And it was a lot. I didn't play a particularly good game. I was burned out. It showed in my play style. I didn't play my best game, and that's part, part of what decides these types of tournaments is the endurance to really fight it out. Perfection is getting a little aggressive fighting with some of these probes. But no harm, no foul. They will get to work doing what probes were born to do. Charge is on the way for perfections. Once again, really prioritizing getting that Twilight Council out. Let's see if he recognizes. I think I, I read in chat between games. I read in chat. Somebody pointed out that if perfections had A moved seven minutes earlier he probably would have won the game and i think that's true and part of the reason is because he gets this heck out and gets it out in a more timely fashion if you give your opponent all day uh niven might be better at continuing through to that late game like continuing with the upgrades all of that but if you don't let the game get to that point you just win it early uh remembering things and remembering them in a timely fashion becomes a much more important factor who's going to win the game. A uh, slight worker advantage for perfection. Both players on two bases right now. Dark Shrine is going to be the play from perfections, and this has not been scouted here by Niven. Niven does not know about the Dark Shrine, and an unscouted Dark Shrine can cost the game. Niven has gone with a quick robotics facility, but instead of getting an observer, uh, is there any observer on the map? There is not an observer on the map for Niven. So Niven's not going to have the tools that he needs to spot these DTs when they arrive. Dark Shrine's more than halfway done. The time is ticking for him to reconsider his path forward. And uh, right after this Immortal, we're about to see a very key decision from Niven. What comes next? I and mean, he is going to chrono boost an observer. Did he scout it? He didn't even scout it. He's going to chrono boost an observer. Smart thinking here from Niven that uh, may save his hopes in this game.
coming out eager on the map for perfections looking to get aggressive there are these 3 dts and 3 dts do do a lot of damage even if they are spotted i'm interested to see how this goes heavy stalker count on one end but these 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 zealots have charge charge lots should do pretty well against stalkers no immortals though ah man i'm really curious to see how this fight's gonna go army supplies slightly in favor of perfections but uh, a lot of that is in dts One immortal struggling to join the forces of protections, and here we go. He is moving in. These DTs will get spotted in the middle of the army there. He knows what he's dealing with, and here goes the fight. Charge lots charging in. There are so many stalkers here, but watch the stalkers get mowed down. The DTs are doing so much damage. DT charge lot is just slicing through the army of Niven. All of the stalkers are down. Down falls the immortal. Now he is an immortal. He has five DTs, a handful of stalkers all at his front door. What does he have left to deal with this? DT starts slicing through the probes of Niven. Niven's in a lot of trouble here. I'm not sure how he can stop what is at his front door. Another warping of stalkers arrives as well. GG is called. Perfections is headed to the finals of Platinum Heroes number five. Well done.